Dr. Anderson took me to another part of the facility to show me where the virus came from. Bats, bats gathered in China for food. A vet here captured one. And in a containment cage, she showed it to me. And why bats? How confident are you that the coronavirus came from, from bats? So I'm probably 90% confident that the, bat, that the new coronavirus came from bats. The initial contamination, she says, likely happened here at a filthy animal market in Wuhan, China. Someone there, she believes, butchered a bat, came into contact with its blood or urine, and then touched his or her mouth or nose. And answering the question of where COVID-19 came from does more than just give you something to blame. It will also help scientists address this and other illnesses that make the jump from humans to animals. Elodie Gaddon is an epidemiologist and a molecular virologist at New York University's School of Global Public Health, and this happens to be her specialty. So, Elodie, uh, thanks for being here, number one. But let's start off with how do we know that it's actually the bat's fault? Well, if you look at the genetic information of the virus, and that's what we do when we sequence. So the genetic information has basically, that's what the genome of the virus has. And this indicates what the provenance is from. So the, um, the genetic information is like a barcode. And if we compare other viruses that have been collected in bats and the SARS from 2003, was a bat virus also, and it's very similar to our current SARS-CoV. And looking at these, um, at these viruses and looking at their genetic information is like looking at a family tree. You can trace who resembles whom, and that's what we're doing exactly with this, uh, with this virus. So they're able to look at the virus in humans and trace it all the way back and say, this is where it started. Correct. Start with these animals, in this case, bats. That's right. So if you compare that information, it's basically so similar that for that to happen randomly is practically impossible. So we know the ancestor of the virus in humans had to be a bat virus. People always talk about patient zero, about trying to get back to that first patient right. that had this, which in a case like this is virtually impossible to do. But why is it important to find out where it originated, what animal it started in? Okay, so when you look at what we call zoonotic transmission, so basically it's from an animal to a human, what you often want to understand is what are the conditions that really lead to that kind of transmission. So knowing where the virus comes from is important from an epidemiological standpoint. It's, you know, if it comes from bats, could we prevent such emergence by preventing the contact of human and animal or wildlife, in this case, bats. So it's important to know where a virus comes from. One of the big questions I get from viewers is, is this mutating? Is this virus going to mutate and we're going to have to do something like we do with the flu or could it even be more deadly? Is that something to be scared of? Well, a virus always mutates. Uh, just by nature, viruses mutate quite quickly and that's part of their adaptation to their new hosts. Uh, and so it will mutate, and it's very possible that it'll be like flu, where the mutations will lead to new surface proteins, and that's what our immune system recognizes, are basically the proteins on the surface of the virus. And the virus, it's possible that coronavirus will be like flu, where although now we're all susceptible and we will eventually, you know, we suspect maybe 70 to 80 percent of us will catch it, that means we will have some resistance against that version of the virus. And it's possible that it becomes a seasonal coronavirus like we see in uh, the human population. We have human coronaviruses that come back every year. Uh, and it's possible that SARS-CoV will be uh, becoming one of those seasonal epidemics. We just don't know at this point. And the vaccine would have to be updated every year, just like the flu. And up until a couple of weeks ago, it was called novel coronavirus, that novel meaning it's new. And so what you're saying is since it's new and our bodies haven't found this before, we don't really have much protection against it, but that protection might build up over time. Correct, that's right. And that's what happens with the flu. Um, all flu, seasonal flu that we see today were pandemics decades ago. So the 1918 flu that we always talk about as the worst pandemic we've seen in our, in our history 
actually is now a seasonal flu or became a seasonal flu until we had another pandemic in 2009. Uh, and this one also has become a seasonal flu. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.